Hello, welcome to the channel and the next video on HIV AIDS, part two of two. Let's briefly recap on what we learned in part one. We studied about AIDS defining conditions, the increasing prevalence of HIV AIDS, which is driven in part by HIV infected people living longer thanks to antiretroviral treatment. And we briefly touched on how T cell exhaustion results in opportunistic infections and malignancies. This time, we'll dive into the hematological manifestations of HIV AIDS. HIV patients tend to be anemic, thrombocytopenic, neutropenic, and have an elevated risk of thrombotic microangiopathy. Anemia, which can be defined as a reduction in hemoglobin concentration or hematocrit, is common in people living with HIV. This occurs because of decreased production of red blood cells, for example, due to marrow infiltration of opportunistic infections and HIV AIDS related lymphomas. HIV infected patients also experience increased destruction of red blood cells, for example, due to immune mediated hemolysis. And finally, they lose blood from the gastrointestinal tract, especially when they have Kaposi sarcoma in the GI tract. Thrombocytopenia or low platelet counts might occur because of shortened platelet survival in HIV infected patients not on ART, as well as direct infection of progenitor cells. In the same vein, neutropenia occurs because of marrow suppression from the virus or from antiretroviral treatment. We'll go more into depth about thrombotic microangiopathy, which is associated with inadequate HIV treatment and low CD4 counts in a later video. HIV is also associated with reactivation of latent infections, including Epstein-Barr virus and several herpes viruses, which further predispose to lymphoproliferative diseases. Some of these include the following. Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which is the most common lymphoma in patients with HIV. Burkitt's lymphoma, AIDS-related primary CNS lymphoma, primary effusion lymphoma, classic Hodgkin lymphoma, and Castleman disease, a rare inflammatory illness accompanied by lymphadenopathy and splenomegaly with elevated cytokines and HHV8 viremia, with a high risk of progression to lymphoma. Most hematological manifestations of HIV are related to poorly controlled HIV. Hence, the best a doctor can offer to such patients is encouragement to continue ART for as long as possible in order to help keep a normal CD4 count and suppressed viral load. Treatment options for lymphoproliferative diseases are broadly similar in HIV infected and non-infected patients. So that's about all for now. If you've got any questions or suggestions, just drop them in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you next time.